Welcome everyone to German Tool Reviews. This video is a follow-up to the previous hex key testing video to address a couple of issues that came up. Firstly, I'm sorry about the audio on that video. Things like that always seem to happen every once in a while. One of the main comments I got is that I would get different head-to-head -head results if I used a quality hex key as opposed to the Husky set that I was using in the latter half of the video. I was using a VHA L key in the beginning of that video and it didn't strip the head, so that probably is a valid observation. That got me thinking if a quality hex key would perform better than a much cheaper and lower quality L key. The brand that kept coming up as a quality L key set was Bondus. Therefore, I went out on Amazon and found the most expensive Bonda set that I could find and ordered it. I also perused Amazon to find the cheapest, lowest quality piece of junk L key set that I could find. That is actually not as easy as it sounds because Amazon will remove items if there really is a problem with them. I decided on this stalwart combined SAE metric set that I got for $7.99, even though it looks like the price has been raised since then. The other hypothesis I want to test is does the size of the hex drive make a difference for quality L keys versus higher end units? Since I don't have a load cell to measure any bolts greater than a quarter inch, I decided to design a test fixture with a caliber torque wrench. I found these plates at McMaster Car that are used to hold threaded rod from ceilings and are commonly used for hanging fixtures and lighting. You can get them in many different materials but I decided to get them in cast iron for the reason you will see soon. These particular plates have a 3 8 16 thread. The test setup is shown in this 3D model. You could just put this plate in a vise, but I went ahead and designed a mounting plate that could be bolted to a bench for a more controlled setup. I decided to use two grade 8 washers because I was concerned about the top of this plate not being totally flat. The screw I'm using is an alloy steel 3816 socket cap screw. The test plate is then screwed down to the mounting plate using some quarter 20 flathead screws. I did make a couple of small modifications to the test plate, which shouldn't affect the test results. I opened up the mounting holes a little bit to better accept these quarter 20 screws, and I also ran a tap through the threads to clean up any grime or paint that is collected. You'll also need a half inch drive torque wrench and a 5 16 in hex socket. What I want to simulate first is a bolt that is properly torqued down, but is hard to remove from subsequent corrosion. To do this, we will use a common trick for aging metal, which is to soak it in bleach overnight. Correct torque for a bolt this size and grade would be around 60 newton meters, or about 45 foot pounds. Setting the torque wrench at 60 newton meters, we will torque down three of the socket cap screws in the test fixture. Next, we will soak the three in some standard Clorox bleach overnight to simulate many years of rust and corrosion. You're probably going to want to put this outside or in a well-ventilated area because it can outgas depending on the composition of the metals used. The other situation where you may strip a socket cap screw is if someone used permanent thread locker on the fastener. I'll do a second set of three with some Loctite 271 high strength thread locker. I'll also increase the torque slightly to 70 newton meters to simulate someone over torquing the bolts. This particular thread locker takes about 10 minutes to set and another 24 hours to fully cure, so we'll let it sit overnight as well. So after letting our first set of three sit in bleach overnight, it has produced a significant amount of corrosion on all the metals. Let's try the three L keys to see if we have any issues getting them off. Surprisingly, I was able to get them off all just fine, even with all the rust and corrosion binding the screws. Now let's try the slightly over torqued subjects with permanent thread locker applied. Again, I could remove it with all three L keys. So let's step it up even more and torque units to 80 newton meters, which is approximately 25% over torqued. We'll again, apply some permanent thread locker. After these subjects cured, let's try the test again. <clears throat> It was a little bit tougher, but I was able to get them to loosen without damage to the fastener or the tool. 
At this point I decided just to test the lowest quality L key to see at what torque it would actually fail. I took the torque wrench up to 90 newton meters, which is 40% higher than the recommended torque value. After torquing it to this value, I couldn't get enough torque to turn the L key on my own. I hit it with the hammer a couple of times, but that didn't seem to do anything. I'll use this homemade hammer as a cheater bar on the L key to see if I can get it to turn. And I was able to get it to turn without damage again. Next I stepped it up to 100 newton meters, and I could still remove it without stripping the head. I continued on this path incrementing by 10 newton meters each time. At 140 newton meters, the threads in the mounting plate were stripped. So it looks like that, that is the limit of this text fixture. So the last successful test was at 130 newton meters, which is a 115% increase in the torque from the recommended value. I'm going to go ahead and make the bold assumption that is actually the size and quality of the screw that is just a, as important as the quality of the tool. I was using alloy steel bolts, which are stronger than grade 8 bolts. These are about the strongest bolts you can buy, so I believe the reason I couldn't get it to fail is because the steel on the bolt was way too strong to cam out. For larger alloy fasteners, I don't believe the quality of the tool really makes a significant difference in removing or installing high strength socket cap screws. At that point, it would be more personal preference as to which tool you feel most comfortable with. So it got me thinking about bolts made of a material with much less tensile strength than these alloy steel bolts. At first, I thought about solid brass bolts. So I picked up a couple and was torquing them down to 60 newton meters to repeat the test and then this happened. Well, so much for that. After this broke, it got me thinking as to which would fail first, the screw or the actual socket cap. Using some 18-8 stainless screws, I tightened them down using the L keys in the same cheater bar. So it is my conclusion from this testing that for larger bolts, let's say above a quarter inch or M6, the bolt material would twist off well before you had a chance to strip the internal hex socket. So now let's take a look at some smaller bolts to see if we can better quantify the differences between these hex keys. I tapped a hole in a piece of low carbon steel so that we can measure the bolt tension using a similar test fixture as before. We'll continue to use the same test setup as the previous video. All these will be 1032 1 inch length socket cap screws. First up is some alloy zinc plated screws that are supposed to be stronger than grade 8 material. First up is the El Cheapo hex key. This is using a 1 8 inch drive. Before camming out, I got a reading of 1.5, 1.45, and 1.5. Taking the median reading, this would equate to 3,000 pounds force since the load cell is 0 to 10,000 and the gauge is only reading 0 to 5. Next up is the Bondus. The first test cammed out very early at 1.3. However, under closer examination, this looks to be operator error because the paint that is applied to it is, makes it very hard to get the hex fully seated. I used a hammer to reseat the L key as it would not seat all the way due to a layer of paint that was applied. After this, I was able to get it up to around 1.6 before the bolt started to yield. At this point, if I kept screwing, the bolt head would just screw right off. The third reading was around 1.65, again at the yield strength. Therefore, the Bondus key is better than the lower quality key in this case. When I went to do the test on the Vera L key, I could only get it up to about 1.4 before it started to yield. The second bolt, I broke the head off. On the third test, the threads pulled through the steel block, so I don't think I can include the Vera results in this test. I flipped the block over to use the good threads for the remaining tests. Next up, we'll test some low profile socket cap screws. These are designed for more or ornamental purposes and are not intended for high strength applications. These are the style of socket cap screws that you would be most likely to strip, so let's see how much tension we can get out of it before that happens. 
These use a 332nd inch drive. On the cheap hex key we got readings of 0 0.2, 0 0.25, and 0 0.25. Next up is the Bondus, which I observe readings of 0 0.425, 0 0.4, and 0 0.45. Now for the Vera Hex Plus, the readings were 0 0.5, 0 0.45, and 0 0.5. So it looks like the Vera Hex Plus is getting about 17% more clamping force, which is in the same ballpark as Vera's claim of 20%. Next up are some 18.8 stainless steel screws with black oxide finish. Since these are much softer than the alloy socket cap screws we tested before, we should see a lower yield strength on the meter. The only unit that failed this test was the cheap hex key in one instance. In all other instances we hit the yielding tension without issue, which was around 1900 pounds of force. Other than that one failure, I see no difference in the three L keys for this test. Next up we'll try some 18A button head socket cap screws. These use an eighth inch drive. But before doing that I thought I would show you the build quality of this cheap set. This is straight out of the package and as you can see the lack of workmanship with huge burrs on the ends of this L key. For the cheap hex key I got it to cam out on all three occasions with readings of 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and 0 0.7. For the Bondus again I had a problem with it camming out prematurely at 0 0.5. Again I had to hammer it in place to get it to seat properly. The second reading came out to 0 0.8, while the third reading again cammed out at early at 0 0.5. I think the issue here is the paint that was applied is making the width of the hex keys out of tolerance, and therefore it makes it impossible to seat it without some sort of mechanical advantage. Therefore I would not recommend getting any set of painted L keys for this reason. Just for comparison's sake, I'm going to take the higher of the two numbers here, 0 0.8, to give the Bondus the benefit of the doubt. For the Vera L key, I was able to get it up to around 0.8 before snapping off the head. The second time, it was around 0.95. I didn't do a third test for this one as I figured it would make no difference since the screw was failing before the actual socket drive. I'll average these two to get 0.875. Therefore, in this case, the Vera unit was about 9% better than the Bondus. I was going to do one more test with a flathead screw, but after camming it out the first time, it took me about 20 minutes to remove this screw since I had to carefully drill it out, so I decided not to do this particular test. So now let's take a look at the tools used in the test for any damage. The 8th inch cheap L key took the most damage, and as you can see it developed a nice twist along with a lot of peening at the, of the edges. The bond has fared much better, but as you can see any paint that was on there is now stripped off. Didn't see much happening on the Vera unit. For the 332nd key, the cheap unit definitely saw a lot of peening to the point where this key is garbage if it wasn't already when it was new. No issues seen with the Bondus or the Vera in this size. On the 532nd key, it's the same story, peening on the cheap one, just some paint scraping on the Bondus and not much going on on the Vera. For the 516th key is using the original test, any rust that you see on here is just transferred from that cheater bar. All three of them held up pretty well considering I was abusing them and putting them well past their design limits. So here are the conclusions and takeaways I have from all this testing. First, the quality of the hex key does in fact matter, especially for the smaller sizes. Second, for larger screws you're more likely to break the bolt before you strip out the hex socket. This does totally depend on the size material of the screw. Thirdly, using low quality L keys on both less than a quarter inch are likely to strip the socket when over torqued. If you don't over torque it then the chances are nothing bad will happen. Number four, for regular socket cap screws the Bondus and Vera hex keys did perform about the same reaching the yield strength of the screw without camming out the hex socket. Fifth, for specialty type socket screws the hex plus system did outperform the Bondus. The reason that I said that I now only use hex plus keys is related to this performance improvement. Since I often use button socket cap screws and I have always had issues in the past with stripping out these heads. I've actually designed entire assemblies made up of nothing but button head socket cap screws. No, you don't need to throw out your quality regular hex keys for the hex plus ones. But if you are somebody that uses low profile socket cap screws then it would definitely be worth a look. Well hopefully for those that are still awake you enjoyed that. I did this more to satisfy my own curiosity about a socket cap screws I'm sure there's a textbook out there that covers all this that I just did, but, but I always like to do my own little experiments to test things out. Well, that's going to wrap up this one, and I'll catch you guys next time.